Hey everyone, welcome to another deep dive. Today, we're gonna time travel back to 1991 for a look at, well, draining. 1991, huh? I had uh, bigger hair back then, what'd we dig up? We found this article in Technical and Skills Training Magazine all about proving the ROI of training. Even back then, huh? I bet that wasn't easy. It wasn't. But this article, get this, it's got this whole concept called C-O-N-C. C-O-N-C. Oh, right. Cost of nonconformance. Yeah, I remember that being a big deal. Cost of nonconformance. That sounds kind of scary, honestly. It's not as bad as it sounds. It basically means the money lost because, well, employees might not be performing at their best. Think about it um, like a factory, you know. Okay, I'm picturing a factory. If everyone is doing their job perfectly, making widgets as fast as they can, no mistakes, then you're golden. Yeah. But uh, in reality, there are always going to be some slip-ups, right? Right. People make mistakes. Things get missed. Exactly. That's where CONC comes in. It's the cost of those mistakes, those missed okay. opportunities, because maybe skills aren't where they could be. So it's like the cost of things going wrong because, I don't know, maybe someone didn't get enough training. Exactly. See, back then, people struggled to justify the cost of training. But CONC, that helped them show just how much money they were losing by not training their people. Wow, that makes sense. I mean, numbers speak louder than words, right? Exactly. And this article, they actually use this great visual, like they have these little worker guys climbing a building. Climbing a building, okay. And each floor on the building, it represents a different skill level. The higher you climb, the more skills you have, and, well, the more valuable you are to the company. I like that. So the higher you climb, the more widgets you can make, I guess. Exactly. It's all connected. Mm. And if you're not investing in training, well, your employees are stuck on those lower floors, you know. Makes sense. So we know CONC is about figuring out the cost of those uh, skill gaps, right? But how do you actually calculate it? Like, give me the 1991 version. It's all about comparing basically what an employee could be earning for the company if they were performing at 100 percent their potential versus what they're actually bringing in based on their current performance. So you're saying even back then, they understood that those gaps, those differences, well, those had a real cost. Absolutely. And the difference between those two numbers, that's your CONC, the price you pay for that gap in performance. So you're literally putting a dollar amount on what that untapped potential is costing you. It's like you're leaving money on the table, right? Untapped potential just sitting there. And training is the key to unlocking it, right? Exactly. It's like giving those workers uh, the boost they need to climb higher, improve their skills, and then bam, their performance goes up. And so does their value to the company. And as they climb, that CONC number, th that shrinks, right? Because you're closing the gap between what they could be doing, their potential, and what they are actually doing. Exactly. You're getting it. And, you know, and that was a big deal back in 91, this idea that training wasn't just an expense, but it could actually make you money. Because no one gets excited about spending money. But if you tell them, hey, this investment could actually make you more money, well, that's a different story. Right. And this article, they really emphasize that you can speak the language of business, forget all the fancy jargon, just show them the numbers, the return on investment. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. It's like sometimes I try to pitch ideas at work. And if I just say, oh, I think this would be a good idea, it goes nowhere. But if I can go in and say, look, if we do this, we could save this much money or we could increase efficiency by this much. Suddenly people listen. It's all about connecting the docs, right? Yeah. Showing how training leads to those tangible results, those metrics that actually matter to the higher ups. So the CNNC thing, it's all about those metrics, but the article also mentions that it doesn't capture every single cost, right? Yeah, you're right. It mainly focuses on the financial impact of those performance gaps, like how much money you're losing directly. But think about all those other hidden costs that are harder to measure, you know, like um, how much time is wasted because people have to redo things or how many projects miss deadlines because of, well, maybe some skills are lacking. Right. All those little things add up. Exactly. Yeah. So even if you're not calculating C down to the very last penny, it's still a really valuable way to think about training. You know, shifting that mindset from seeing it as a cost to seeing it as a smart investment. Totally. And this article, even though it's from way back in 1991, it lays out this really clear framework for doing that, for making the case for training. Oh, and it even talks about how those CONC calculations, they can actually get pretty complex, especially when you have like teams where different people have different skill levels. Mm. Right, because not everyone needs the same amount of training. Mm -hmm. Some people might be killing it at their jobs, like maybe they're already performing at 90%, while others might be struggling at, say, 60%. 
So how do you factor that in? Like, do you calculate CONC for each individual person or for the team as a whole? That's a great question. And the article actually suggests that you can do both. Calculating it for individuals can help you pinpoint exactly where those skill gaps are so you can be more targeted with your training programs. Oh, I like that. So it's not just a one-size-fits-all approach. You're ah. figuring out who needs what and tailoring the training accordingly. Smart. It's like personalized training recommendations, but for your budget. <laughs> I love it. But even if you calculate CONC for individuals, you can still see how it all adds up for the whole team, right? Absolutely. You get that granular view, but also the big picture impact on the team's overall performance and, well, the bottom line. And that brings me to what I really loved about this article. It's not just about the numbers. It's about strategy, mm. you know, like they actually give you advice on how to use CONC to make a killer business case for training. Because even the best ideas need a good sales pitch, right? Exactly. And they had some really solid advice even back then. Two things stood out to me. First, data is king. You can't just say, oh, I think training would be nice. You got to come armed with those numbers to prove that it's worth the investment. Data-driven decisions, always a good idea. Right. And CONC gives you that data. It's like, boom, here's how much money we're losing by not training our people. Hard to argue with that. Exactly. And their second piece of advice. Oh, yeah. Speak the language of business. Lose the jargon. Ditch the flowery language. Just get straight to the point. This training will impact the bottom line by X. Because ultimately, that's what it's all about connecting training to those business outcomes that really matter. Exactly. And suddenly, that training budget doesn't seem so unreasonable right now. It's an investment, plain and simple. And this article, even though it's, what, over 30 years old now, it really lays that out beautifully. It's a good reminder that some things never change, right? Mm -hmm. Even though the way we do training has evolved, the fundamentals of proving its value, those are timeless. Absolutely. So for everyone listening, think about it. How could you use this idea of skill and C in your own work? Even if you're not calculating it down to the penny, just understanding that there's a cost to not training, that's a powerful mindset shift. It really is. Maybe you're not making widgets, but there's always a cost of nonconformance, right? Whether it's missed deadlines, inefficient processes, or just, you know, the missed opportunity of helping your people reach their full potential. It's about recognizing that investing in your people, that's always a smart move. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So next time you're fighting for that training budget, remember CONC. Channel your inner 1991 training hero and show them the power of investing in growth. And who knows? Maybe those hammer pants will come back in style while you're at it. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's it for today's deep dive, everyone. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and as always, keep digging for those hidden gems of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs>